Welcome, this is a short video introducing the concept of operators in modern programming languages. To start off with, an operator is not a telephone operator. In programming, an operator is something that takes one or more values or expressions and returns another value. For example, in the expression 5 plus 7, the plus sign is the operator. Four basic terms to be aware of. Uh, operand refers to the expression that the operator operates on. So for example, 5 plus 7, the 5 and 7 uh, are the operands, um, where the plus sign is the operator. A unary operator is an expression that has only one operand. A binary operator, which is the most common kind, is an operator that has two operands. And the ternary operator, which we're not going to show in this video, has three operands. There are four basic types of operators. Arithmetic, which do arithmetic, as you might expect. Assignment, which uh, assign values to variables and constants. Comparison operators compare two values. And logical operators are used to reach true or false determinations about a set of expressions. So now let's look at some code. Um, examples of the various different types of operators, starting with arithmetic operators. In JavaScript, uh, you have a unary operator, uh, the plus sign or the minus sign. Uh, and the plus sign, which you don't see all too often, has the job of converting a value into its numeric equivalent. So for example, plus uh, the string three will give you the integer value three plus true and plus false will give you integer one and zero. Um, and the negative sign has the uh, property of inverting those. So it would be minus three or minus one. The basic arithmetic operators should be pretty straightforward, plus, minus, multiply, and divide. Uh, the only one you might not have seen before is the percent sign, which is uh, called the modulo operator in programming. And that gives you the remainder uh, if you are doing uh, integer division. So 5 modulo 2 would be 2 into 5, which would be 2 with a 1 left over. That 1 remainder uh, is what would be referred to by the modulo operator. You've also got these things called the increment and decrement operators. This is the plus plus and minus minus that you see below here. Um, you can put the plus plus after the variable, which is referred to as the postfix notation, or before the variable, plus plus x, is the prefix notation. Uh, but regardless of which you use, um, Douglas Crockford, who is one of the superstars of JavaScript and one of the creators of much of the, of the modern language, um, thinks that using the increment and decrement operators is bad. Um, that you should not do it at all. Um, but here's some examples of how those would work and, and how you have to be careful about those. Also, uh, newer versions of JavaScript have an exponentiation operator. X star star Y is the same thing as X to the Y power. Um, not all uh, versions of JavaScript implement this, so be, so be careful where you use it because it might not work. Python's operators are relatively straightforward. It's got uh, one that you haven't seen before though, which is the uh, floor division operator. Python is the only language which has this operator, which, oper uh, which behaves as is noted here. R has the unary plus operator, which converts uh, values to their uh, integer equivalents, and it can do that either for a single value or for a vector of values. Same thing for the unary minus will invert every element in the uh, vector if you have one. The modulo operator in R uses 2% signs instead of a single one as with JavaScript. Uh, the exponentiation operator, there are two versions of it. One is the double star like you've seen before uh, and the other one is the caret symbol. R also has an operator for integer division uh, which discards the decimal part and that's percent forward slash percent as shown here. Ruby uh, is pretty similar to the ones before and doesn't bear much special recognition. PHP is also fairly similar to uh, the other languages that you've seen. Java is very similar as well. Uh, 
and go is also similar. So let's move on to assignment operators. This is where you're assigning a value to a variable. For example, x equals three uses the assignment operator, the equal sign, the single equal sign. So the first thing to notice here is that a common syntax for programming languages is uh, to give a shorthand notation for operations like x equals x plus three. Um, as x plus equals 3, where x minus equals 3 is the same as x equals x minus 3. Uh, and you can understand how these all operate by looking at the examples here. As we talked about before, how Douglas Crockford thinks that the increment uh, plus plus or minus minus uh, operators are dangerous, uh, he thinks that if you ever need to use plus plus, you should actually say x plus equals 1. Uh, if you want to use minus minus, you should say x minus equals 1. Um, and note here that the lack of equivalence between the different types of prefix and postfix increment operators. Python assignment operators are pretty much the same, and they follow on from the arithmetic operators. R has uh, several different assignment operators. It's got the single equal sign, it's got the left pointing single arrow, the left pointing double arrow, the right pointing single arrow, and the right pointing double arrow. In practice, these last three uh, assignment operators are almost never used. You'll probably never see them except in specialized code or code from people who are not quite sure what they're doing. Um, in general, the two that you will see are the use of the equal sign, single equal sign, and the left pointing arrow. The difference between these is uh, the scope of the assigned variable. So if you use the single arrow sign, it will create a globally scoped variable that will be available from other parts of your program. If you use the single equal sign, it creates a locally scoped variable, which will not be globally visible, uh, as the examples here demonstrate. Uh, Ruby is pretty similar to the other ones. Uh, there are a couple of operators that are particular to Ruby here. Uh, one is the pipe pipe equals, right? That vertical bar is uh, referred to as a pipe. Uh, and this, the pipe pipe equals and the and and equals or ampersand ampersand equals. Now, these two operators are um, used in situations where you need to assign a value uh, only if it either did or did not have a value before, as the example explains. PHP operators are pretty straightforward, as are Java operators, and as are Go operators. Now the only thing to mention here in Go is that uh, the colon equals operator, assignment operator, uh, is a shorthand for having first declared a variable, for example, var x int, which would declare a variable x, which is of type int, uh, and then if assigning x a value, x equals three. You could sh do that all in one go by saying x colon equals three. The thing you have to be careful f with here is that go will have to infer what data type you want x to have in this case. Um, and as you may have seen in the symbols video, there are like eight different kinds of integers in Go. And so you might not get the one that you were uh, expecting if you use that colon equals shorthand notation. Okay, so let's look at comparison operators. Uh, these are generally uh, for determining whether two values are equal or one is less than or greater than the other one. In JavaScript, you see I've uh, created three variables here, x, y, and z. Uh, x is uh, numeric, y is a string, z is also numeric. To determine whether the two are equal, um, there are two different operators. There's the double equal sign which checks just the value. So if you look at x, which is an integer, and y, which is the string three, x equals equals y, uh, it just checks the value and three equals three, so that would return a true. Uh, likewise, x not equals y would return false. However, um, there are times when you want to check both the value and the data type. So x equals 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 y, x or x triple equal y, uh, would check to see if they have the same value, which they do, but then it'll check the data type, uh, which is different, right? One is an integer and one is a string, uh, and so that would return false. 
Um, Douglas Crawford, uh, in this, you know, in this case, advocates that you always use strict equality, that you always use the triple equal sign, uh, unless you know you have a very special reason to use the double equal sign. The less than and greater than operators uh, uh, below don't have a strict version for data type checking, so use them with care, but they operate pretty much as you would expect them to. Python, the double equal sign is again used for equality comparison and it does type checking. So if X and Y are of different types like string and integer, then you will get a false uh, value if you try to see if they're equals. Um, also note that if they are different, for example, uh, one is a string and one is an integer, uh, if you try to use the less than, less than or equals, greater than, greater than equals uh, comparison operators, you're going to get an error uh, indicating that the variables are of incomparable types. In R, your equality operator does not include type checking. So if you have the integer 3 and the string 3, uh, they will be deemed the same if you say x equals equals y. Um, there is no uh, equality operator in R, uh, which is like the triple equals operator in JavaScript. So you need to be careful about which data types you're using when you are using comparison operators in R. Ruby makes things even more specific. Uh, so you have to be careful here, right? So I've got my three variables here are uh, x equals three, which is an integer, y equals the string three, and z equals the float 3, right, as indicated by the value 3.0. Now, uh, intuitively, they all seem to have the same value, um, but x equals equals y would be false because they are of different data types. x equals equals z would be true because they're both numeric and they both have the value 3. But if you use the x dot equal eql question mark function to, to check to see if x is equal to z, um, it's going to say that the answer is false because even though they have the same numeric value, uh, one is a float and one is an integer. And so you need to be careful when using those. Uh, greater than, less than, do what you would expect. The triple equals operator in Ruby does something that you haven't seen before. Uh, it essentially asks the question, does the right hand operand Y belong to the left hand operator operand X uh, set of, you know, represented by the left hand operator X. So you can see here, um, if you've got the set of integers from one to five, then three uh, is, a, is a member of that set and so would, re would result in the true. Uh, result. Six is not a member of that set, and so if you did one dot dot five equals 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 six, you should get a false. Ruby also has another operator you haven't seen before, the combined comparison operator, uh, also known as the spaceship operator. Uh, if the two values, your two operands are the same, you get a zero. Uh, if the left one is greater than the right one, you get uh, a one. And if you, if the left one is less than the right one, then you get a negative one. PHP, pretty much the same as what you've seen so far. Um, I will note that um, it has a double equals and triple equals similar to JavaScript. It also has a uh, two versions of the not equal sign. One is with the exclamation point equals and one uses less than greater than signs to imply not equal. Um, the newest version of PHP version 7.0 also introduced the spaceship operator like you saw in Ruby and it behaves the same way as in Ruby. Comparison operators in Java of course are strongly typed uh, so there is no uh, triple equal or just a double equal, uh, which would check for both type and value. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Go, you also have to be extremely careful about your data types. Uh, so for example, here, um, if we have the variable x, which is the integer 3, and variable a, which is a float, equal to 3.0, x equals equals a is going to give you an error saying that they're incomparable types. Other languages might just say that that's uh, false. 
But again, this highlights the importance of understanding what your data types are and how they interact in your programming language. And finally, we have logical operators. Uh, logical operators typically seek to determine values like true or false when you are combining multiple values. So uh, the three logical operators are and, or, and not. Uh, in JavaScript, and is represented by two ampersands, uh, or is represented by two pipes, and the not operation is represented by an exclamation point. In Python, you actually use the words and, or, and not to mean and, or, and not. In R, uh, you have a special case here. Um, a single ampersand or a single pipe is what's known as the element-wise version of the AND operator or the OR operator. And those, um, those element-wise operators give you uh, return a vector which compares every element in the two input vectors. So if X is a vector of values and Y is a vector of values, then it would do uh, the first element of X and the, second and the first element of Y. Uh, as the first value in your output, the second uh, element in X and the second element in Y uh, as the second output of your uh, second element of your output, etc, etc. Uh, similar to the not operator, uh, the not operator will invert every element in your vector. However, you can also use the double ampersand or the double pipe um, for comparing uh, vectors or uh, scalar values in R and in the the case of using the double ampersand or double pipe uh, it just compares the first element uh, in each of those input uh, operands so you need to be careful with those but in general um, you should also note that in R um, you typically don't use structures like this with the if uh, and braces and else. Uh, there are other functions that will perform this for you. Ruby is like a combination of Python and JavaScript. It allows you to use either the words and or not or the double ampersand double pipe or exclamation point like you saw in JavaScript. PHP is also one that gives you a lot of flexibility. You can use the words and or or you can use the double ampersand, the double pipe. Uh, not is only represented by an exclamation point, and PHP is the only language which has uh, an exclusive OR operator, also known as XOR. Uh, the difference between OR and XOR, uh, with OR, uh, your expression will be true if X is true, or Y is true, or if both of them are true. With exclusive OR, the expression will be true if X is true, or why is true, but not both of them. Okay, and that's a very subtle difference, but an important one. And again, PHP is the only programming language that has exclusive OR as uh, one of its logical operators. Java and Go are pretty much exactly like JavaScript. So in general, things to watch out for um, are unexpected results based on the types of your operands. So it's that's really important that you know when you're using strings or integers or floats or booleans or whatever type of variable you're using, um, know what's going to happen if you try start mixing and matching those uh, with operators. Um, many times it'll give you an error, uh, but sometimes it won't, and the output might be not quite what you expect. Uh, you also might want to avoid using the increment and decrement operator regardless of which programming language you're in uh, because the bugs that can happen are not peculiar just to JavaScript. In summary, operators are a fundamental part of programming. There are four, four primary types, arithmetic, assignment, comparison, and logical. And in general, there's a lot of similarity among the different programming languages, but you really need to be careful. Uh, of the subtle differences if you're switching back and forth between different languages. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much.